Hello and welcome to this week again report. We've got episode 164 here for the 1st of June 2023. This is the show where we talk about everything that's been published on Gear Report since the last show, things that are upcoming in our review queue. And typically we're going to have TJ's happy hour. But as you may have noticed, I'm here solo this evening. TJ may not make it. He had some tech issues today that he may not be able to recover from. So we will see if he joins us. Uh, we don't have any other guests lined up at the moment. So this could be a short show. We're going to have to see if you're out there in the audience. If you don't leave a comment, we don't know you're there. And we do generally for any show, we appreciate audience participation because it uh, really helps the show to be more engaging and more uh, interesting for you. As you can see, I'm here by myself. Our prospects for having a good show go up significantly if we have um, more people participating. Uh, okay, it looks like TJ and, okay, our normal guest. All right, why is that not loading? I see a comment from TJ. It says, I'm here in spirit. And there we go. Now I got it up on the screen. Um, I'm here in spirit while drinking spirits. Okay, so it looks like TJ gave up on overcoming his tech issues. And he he is, uh, I'd say he phoned it in because I think he is uh, looking at this on his phone. Komar also here in spirit, apparently with the appropriate greeting of three yo's. My head is huge. Yeah. Yep, if, uh, if we spent any time face-to-face -to -face together, you would have known that by now. But uh, and, and rem remembering the three yo's, we appreciate. The only prescribed and appropriate greeting for this program, obviously, is three yo's. Hancho Fett kicking in some yo's. Hancho Fett's got a, a review or two in the queue that should be published here at some point. I don't know. It hadn't been submitted yet as pending, which is the, the step before being published, so... I don't know what's going to happen. Let me let me try to add from the other screen. What is this? On oh, my new fancy Pixel 7 Pro. All right. I'm not, you know what? I'm not even going to ask how you can watch it and make comments, but can't log in and join the program because I understand how tech issues work. So on my screen, the screen I'm about to add is flickering. So I'm going to attempt to add it. I don't know what's up with that. We'll see if it comes. Yeah, that looks like it's flickering. Let me get that off the screen. Stop sharing. And I will attempt to do that again. TJ, yeah. TJ so rarely is here um, in the comments, normally on the screen, that I think he forgot the traditional greeting of three yo's. All right, let's see if we can get a flicker free. Ah, it might work this time. What is this? Getting ready for Thunder on the Prairie tonight. It's good to hear that that event is coming up. W wish I were closer and able to make that. And uh, Komar says that Pixel 7 Pro is the best phone ever. That There have been a lot of phones made in the history of phones. So that that's a pretty big, uh, pretty big statement, in my opinion. Let's see if I make that smaller. Will it? That does not expand it vertically. Okay, that's what we get. So we have one published article that we're going to talk about this week in this section of the program, which, of course, is what we call recent reviews. And also, I put the ticker up there so you can see Maxim Defense as a sponsor. Before we dig into this article about the 5150 Evolve 15 rifle, I want to brag on our sponsor, Maximum Defense, a bit. You haven't seen or heard from them on this program much lately, like since this, this calendar year, because the ATF and their absolutely unconstitutional ban on um, pistol braces has negatively impacted Maximum Defense, who makes some of the most innovative, beautiful pistol braces out there. Uh, as well as SBR stocks and, and rifle stocks and whatnot. Um, but Maxim Defense stepped up and joined the lawsuit with the Fire, Firearms Policy Coalition and has won an injunction for Maxim customers so they don't have to follow the rules of the um, 
of the pistol brace ban, uh, at least in the meantime, while waiting on the that case that they're in to be resolved. I think uh, uh, obviously Firearms Policy Coalition was part of that. And um, what was the other one? Oh, GOA, I think they got an injunction in their case uh, yesterday or today. Uh, keep in mind, all this stuff I'm telling you is like third, fourth hand information that I saw while scrolling around on social media. Uh, I am not an attorney. I'm not giving you legal advice. Uh, go research these things for yourself. But I did want to give a, a virtual high five to Maxim Defense for stepping up as one of the only brands that I've seen out there leading the charge with one of these high profile lawsuits, trying to get these ridiculous rules knocked down. Uh, let's see. A comment from Honcho Fett. Oh, I see. So that review from Honcho Fett was published already. Maybe I read it wrong. Uh, when I was looking at the pending information in WordPress, heard there are three injunctions now against the pistol race brace ruling by the ATF. In order to get an injunction, my understanding from some of the things I've read and uh, what what Bill or uh, William at Washington Gun Law has said, to paraphrase some of the things he said, courts typically only give an injunction if they see the merits of the case as so strong that they expect that that whoever they're giving the injunctive relief to is going to win the case anyway. And uh, if there's any question in that in their mind, then they don't do an injunction. So three injunctions against this pistol brace rule um, speaks pretty strongly that there are some broad legal opinions out there that the rule is not legal, not constitutional, um, therefore shouldn't be enforceable. So we'll, we'll see where it goes. I mean, the, the case against uh, Matt at CRS Firearms looked like it was a joke. It was flimsy, like it had no merit, no grounds whatsoever. It should be thrown out, and now Matt's in jail. So I, I have about this much faith in our legal system right now. But anyhow, to move and dig into this 51.50 Evolve 15, Air 15, Apex Series review from our director of snacks and beverages and uh, one of our head firearms reviewers, TJ. All right. Uh, first thing I want to point out, we have a rating scale here at Gear Report that goes from zero gears up to five gears. Five is perfect. And TJ gave this a 4.5. That is the highest rating that has ever been given at Gear Report. We've never given a five because no product is 100% perfect. So nothing has earned a perfect 5.0 gears. 4.5 is the absolute highest rating ever given. And it has been given to, I mean, we've got 1,700 reviews or something, 1,700 articles published. We've got a lot of reviews. I'd be surprised if it's more than say a hundred or so that have gotten a 4.5 out of all of that, probably more like 30 or 40, I would guess over the, the time that we've been publishing reviews. So it is in uh, rarefied air with a 4.5 out of five years. You can see, let, let me tell you the summary here. I rewrote part of this summary to, to try to make it uh, a little more concise and where is the part I was looking for? So what, I, okay, short version of what makes this special is what they call the RAC, the, the to rotate a cam at the back of the lower that releases what would normally be the rear pin on the AR. Uh, and here's your cam. And uh, it releases what would be that rear pin. And then you can just open it up and pull it off without pulling the front pin because it's not actually um, a traditional. It's, uh, do we have a picture in here? Yeah, like this one up here at the top. That front pin is still in and um, it, it's not captured. So you can pull the, pull the upper off by just rotating that rear cam 
uh, and not having to pull both pins in order to do it. So really innovative system that has a variety of different use cases where it can be beneficial. Uh, I recommend that you take a, take a gander at this review. I'm going to grab that URL and drop it in the comment. That will be interesting to you at all. Definitely go check. Uh, we've got some links in here to their patrol series rifles and the Apex series rifles. So you are welcome to click on either one of those and that'll take you directly to 5150 rifles. Um, and they've been on the program. Keith from 5150 has been on the program. They're, they're good people. Like we've seen them at shot a couple years in a row, spent some time, spent some real quality time with them and uh, really solid individuals running the company. It's uh, uh, I think the core of the company is literally a family but then, honestly, I couldn't tell where the family stopped and the employees started because everyone acted like family. So the, the really the type of brands that we like to support, you know, Maxim making really cool stuff, stepping up to do some legal fights. Uh, 5150 as kind of this family operation that is really doing some cool, innovative things. So a uh, complete brand we're talking about here this evening. OK, so that is the only review published since the show obviously we have the um podcast from last week's show that was published as well and i'll go ahead and click through and see how long it takes to bring that up so that um you know everyone gets a reminder uh we appreciate you watching this in video form uh, but we also make it available as a podcast that you can subscribe to on Amazon, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, Spotify. Yeah, they don't call Spotify where Joe Rogan is anymore. It's where Gear Report is. Joe Rogan just happens to be there as well. YouTube has podcasts. We're on there. iHeartRadio. Uh, and then we're a whole bunch of different places in video form as well. If you like Rumble, you can find us on there as well as YouTube and Odyssey and several other platforms. I mean, seriously, I lose track of all the places that Gear Report is available, but you can get the audio straight off of this page or go to any one of those podcast services and set it up so that it will automatically uh, download that for you in audio form to listen to. Thank you, Crystal, for the yo-yo-yo. We appreciate you joining us. I think Crystal may be on the road as well. So we... we Always appreciate when people check in, especially when it is less convenient because they are away from home where it's easy. So we really appreciate that. Uh, let's see. That concludes our first segment of recent reviews. I'm going to give you a, a bit of a cop out for our next segment. Reviews that will be published soon. I got a bunch of different directions I could go. Uh, and I'm not sure which direction I'm going to go next. I will remind you, I'm not going to try to bring all the different video pages up again. Uh, as we've talked about in the past few weeks, I have been publishing videos fast and furious where we don't have a lot of written review content that has gone up on the gearreport.com website. If you check out any of our different um uh, sub channels, the, the YouTube and then the other media. Uh, actually, I'm going to share the screen again for the one that we were just on. I should have left it up there because uh, it also has a list of the different channels that we have. So let's see if I add that to the stream. Bring it back up up here for us you can see we've got on rumble gear report guitars gear report camping gear report gear report firearms humvee gear report swimming gear report i think in the last week probably swimming fire oh was, did firearms get anything swimming camping and guitars i'm pretty sure got some new content in the last week it was the the og uh gear report channel so there are new video reviews up for a variety of things lots lots of content published in the last week just most of it was not written content on the gearreport.com site. And I don't attempt to show video during this program because my internet will not handle that. So there we go. I think, uh, I think Defense Dad was right. I zoomed in a little too much. Let me see if I can zoom out a little so my head is not quite as large on the screen. 
and I can zoom and then I have to do the focus manually. There we go. I think that's going to work. All right. I like that a little better. So uh, I'm not going to speculate on what's coming for upcoming reviews. Uh, TJ's not here and I don't want to do an injustice to TJ's happy hour. So we're just going to kind of blast past that. I do want to remind everyone that I very thoroughly from the bottom of my heart mean this when I say boo ATF. Uh, and that's not every ATF employee. I'm sure there's some good people who happen to work for the evil empire, but by and large, pretty un-American bunch of people, in my opinion. So let's move on. Uh, I think I think we're just going to dive into uh, America's favorite segment, Guitar Mageddon. All right. So I have one thing to show. Uh, recent acquisition from Epiphone, one of the Gibson brands. We have a Les Paul Jr., and this thing was a bit of a train wreck when it came back to the house yesterday evening. I spent a couple hours this morning cleaning, polishing, adjusting, adding parts, swapping parts. Um, really a, like a complete refurbishment just about, you know, short of repainting things to bring this from pretty much unusable to what actually is a pretty nice playing and sounding guitar. So... Uh, this is actually up for sale on my personal um, Facebook Marketplace page. And I should probably add it to the gear report page for um, guitars for sale. But I've been busy making other videos to post. So anyhow, there we go. Guitar Mageddon, not letting you down. An Epiphone Les Paul Jr. Pretty neat guitar. Heavy. Man, it looks so simple. It looks like a kid's toy guitar to me but this is like a real legit rock machine so pretty pretty interesting guitar i'd play it for you but but i'm not going to because i like y'all too much to do that all right i don't think i have anything else in the guitar mageddon segment so i think with that I'm going to make a last call in the comments. If anyone has anything they'd like to talk about, speak now. Or you're going to have to wait till next week because we have exhausted the bulk of our agenda at this point. I'm about to shut it down. I will share a couple things real quick, though, in the upcoming video reviews and other things that I'm working on. Let's see. Oh, and I really want to show you something that Komar sent me. But I don't know if I'm allowed to disclose that. It's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. And and I'm honored to be a part of a project that, that he is putting together. But I don't know if I'm allowed to share that with you guys. So uh, I'm, I'm not going to until I get confirmation from him. But a couple things I want to show. So number one, I don't know if people have noticed, I have this uh, Yeti style cup. I put a gear sticker on years ago and it's fallen apart. And I had a full gear report logo on this side and it completely fell apart and is gone now. So I have been wanting for my laser engraver to get one of the cup rotators where you can put something uh, on it and then do an engraving. Oh, and the one that I engraved is not up here, so I can't show you. But I now have a cylinder rotator that I can use with the laser engraver. So if you have any designs, if you're if you're part of the Gear Report family, you have anything that you'd like to see put on something like a cup like this, uh, talk to me. Maybe if you want to send me something uh, to do an engraving on and then um, send me the artwork that you want to put on it, maybe we can work something out. I don't mind, you know, I don't want to do a production run of, you know, hundreds of them unless there's significant cash involved, but to help someone out and make something, you know, as a one-off for part of the Gear Report family, maybe we can work something out. So uh, definitely let me know about that. I'm pretty excited. I've been wanting one of those for a while. So I've got, you know, stacks of cups over here that I've gotten off Amazon Vine. So here's one that is white, and it'll go on that rotator, and then the laser will go over the top and do the logo, and the rotator will keep rotating it. So we'll have a, a complete logo on a non-flat, on a 
curved surface and it'll blast that paint away. So I think it's going to turn out really well. And unlike the stickers that fall off and get just terrible looking over time, that uh, laser engraved section should, uh, it should weather really well. Like it, it should look as good a year from now as it does when it's done. Other than all those cups, something that I never thought I would own, but I just picked up. A company sent me this. Uh, it's like a Roomba. It's like, like a different version of a, a Roomba. It's a robotic automatic um, vacuum cleaner. So it works with Wi-Fi. See, I, I haven't opened it. I know nothing about it other than it's sitting here and it's going to get reviewed pretty soon. And uh, actually, I think the next thing to get reviewed is going to be, I've got to wrap up a video for some swim goggles with a little heads up display in them. Uh, I think that was actually, I was hoping to have that done by the end of the month, but uh, I didn't get it done. So maybe I'll finish that up tomorrow and get that posted. I hope it's not a Chinese spy bot. Um, another thing I've been doing lately is reviewing a lot of security cameras for the project with Amazon and each one has a different app and a different login. And I'm thinking, all right, am I, am I just given China basically access to see everything on my property? Um, and I probably am. So we shall see. Uh, anyhow, I think that's going to be it for the show this evening. Thank you everyone who has, uh, shown up, made some comments out there. I appreciate you helping keep the show more interesting than me just talking. We'll be back next week and hopefully we'll have uh, uh, a more robust program for you. Uh, it'll be next Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern because we do this every Thursday at 9 p.m. Uh, until next time, we'll see you at the range.